Hello everyone, I'm Zhang Peiling from Singapore. This is a picture of me. I joined the robotic club at the beginning of this year. I participated in rescue first step uniting category. One of the problems I investigated in this challenge is how to let the robot run an effective path. The robot can move around the map freely except for walls and traps. Hence. It is important to decide a strategy of movement that enables the robot to cover a path which leads to higher score. Considering the challenge mission, the best strategy is the one that increases the probability of running to a treasure the most. The second problem is how to avoid walls and traps without affecting movement too much. If the robot can continue in its optimum path while turning away from walls and traps, the movement will be more smooth and save more time. The methods come out for solving above problems are target squares, control time spent in a square, and identifying regions of high density of certain color. And this helped me to get a score of around 1,300. Specific actions and implementations of those methods still need to be tuned. The challenge mission is shown on the slide. The overall task is broken down into several mini-tasks. The main idea in searching the treasure is to find the robot a target to move to and code it to move there. For depositing, the robot will move to deposit area if it is fully loaded. The map is separated into several squares. During the run, the robot will spend different time in each square. At first, the square which the robot has spent the least time will be targeted. The angle which the robot should be handing to is calculated based on the current position and the position of targeted square using functions in math.h. Then, the robot will turn using differential steering to desired angle and move to the targeted square. Differential steering is the means of steering a land vehicle by applying more drive torque to one side of the vehicle than the other. While moving, there are three situations as shown. Traps are avoided by changing the direction of movement for a while, we insist the warning. Walls are avoided by turning at a rate inversely proportional to its distance from the wall. When fully loaded, the targeted square will be the square with deposit area inside. As the robot spends some time in some squares, it will collect several treasures. It will record the frequency of encountering treasures and target the square with highest frequency. The advantage of this is that the movement of robot will be random depending on the appearance of treasures. Hence, it will tend to go to the places with higher probability of collecting treasures. Here is some pseudo codes of the methods mentioned. The robot kept running into the warning area again after turning away when it turned to the direction of its targeted square. This is solved by disabling target square for a few seconds. There are also minor problems, such as the robot did not go into target square because once it touches the edge of it, the time spent in it is more than the other squares. This is solved by separate code for going into target square and already inside the target square. To conclude, the methods are effective, but details and implementation need to be tuned, and improvements can be made. Improvements such as map-specific hard codes can be added. I learned about the design of robot by looking at the core space robot. I got more familiar with the use of sensors through the process of coding and debugging. 
I also learned that the place of the sensors is important. For example, the ultrasonic sensors on the sides are not facing directly to the sides, but a bit towards the front. By participating in core space, I had a valuable coding experience. The simulator gives me a chance to run my code and practice my skill. So I want to say to other participants, let's enjoy this coding journey together. Thank you.